Happy holidays. I'm Sar Schwartz. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer of BMC Software, and I'm here with Ram Chakavarti. He's the Chief Technology Officer of BMC. And we thought that as we're getting into the close of calendar 2019, we'll have a little conversation about upcoming trends in enterprise software in 2020. And so, Ram, just uh, thinking about what's ahead, uh, maybe we start with edge computing and IoT. That's a really interesting topic for a lot of our uh, customers and viewers, and uh, just getting computing power outside a data center in the edge points. Mm -hmm. What does that mean for potential enterprise customers and IT to be more specific? Thanks, Ar. Hey, guys. Uh, great question for starters. Uh, I believe strongly in the convergence of IT and OT data. And what that does is... And OT it, being? Operational technology. Yeah. Uh, it opens up a whole realm of possibilities in terms of what you can do with the data. Suddenly you have massive explosion in the data that enterprises have access to and the technology to be able to do something with it. Uh, what I look at is... This data is very different from just the traditional IT data that uh, has been in the wheelhouse of traditional tech companies, and nearly everybody and their brother is betting on uh, uh, being the next great company to power through and provide something cool and differentiated in, uh, by way of IoT solutions uh, using it and for edge computing harnessing, right? What is important here is that we need to realize that this is not going to be a one-stop shop in terms of solutions that are provided. It's rather going to be on the basis of an ecosystem of really integrated solutions that can harness this data and look at this data in meaningful ways, translate this information into insights, and those insights then translate into actions that you can take to optimize the use of your uh, IoT assets. So that's something that's going to become more and more important, not just in 2020, but for the next three to five years. So the external data actually would impact the operational data that's being generated. And how would IT practitioners take advantage of that and, and do it maybe in ways that are different than what we've seen in the past? Yeah. So um, without going into what BMC does, uh, let me talk about this in terms of the convergence of operations management, service management, and the natural adjacencies with the security and all of these things, right? So you have to secure your assets, whether they are IT assets or uh, 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 IoT assets or what have you. That, that, Any that's kind a of big asset. one. That's, 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 that's going to continue exactly. to be a, a big trend. And there are going to be threats and vulnerabilities and risks across this, that spectrum. The next is, as you get this data, what you want to do is, at a minimum, you need to be able to look at this information and be able to kind of flag when an IoT asset fails, much like we do today in the traditional monitoring world where we can basically say, hey, this IoT asset failed. That's the notion of traditional monitoring which says what has failed. Beyond that, what you need to be able to do is there is an industry buzzword now that's being used called observability, right? Which is about, it's not just what has failed, it's about why it has failed. That is more the insights that are available as to provide you the root cause and additional insights in terms of what the heck happened in terms of this failing. But there is a notion beyond that also that really interests me and that that's the heart of uh, what we aspire to do. That is the notion called actionability, mm -hmm. which is beyond what failed and why it failed. The notion of actionability leads us to what can I do about it either when it happens, or even more importantly, by way of these advanced insights that I can get ahead of time, what preemptive action can I take to prevent this failure, or if a failure occurs, what can I do to remediate it? That's really at the heart of it. And to the extent that you can create these boundaryless operations with uh, spanning security, operations management, service management, and the action taking by way of remediation or preemptiveness, that is a compelling set of solutions in the marketplace. And I like the term actionability because it, it's not just remediation. Remediation could be, or auto, automatic remediation could be one sort of action that's taken, but in some cases we'll need to route the issue elsewhere or get humans involved, yep. right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's where that service management uh, puzzle piece comes into play. With that kind of integrated suite of solutions, what you can do is, not only can you auto-create the incident, but you can also tag it to the service owners to do the impact analysis to their service and provide you that 
higher order human thinking and decision making that can then help you optimize the remediation at the appropriate point in time. Which is not going away in the near future. No, it's not going away in the near future. And um, we mentioned people and getting people involved in solving these problems, but in some cases, you'll need the help of artificial intelligence. Sure. AI is a game changer, um, massively hyped about and uh, rightly so. In this connotation, the notion of AI ops is uh, front and center to what uh, the solution space calls for. On top of what traditional solutions have done uh, to provide this kind of an integrated solution set across uh, security, across uh, operations, across uh, service management, you can get to higher order insights with AI ops or AI for IT operations, or now I'll extend it to AI for IoT operations. That's gonna be a big theme going forward, right? If you can do that successfully, those higher order insights can translate uh, to two distinct things. First is give you better insights on existing capabilities. Suddenly you're able to do anomaly detection better on much vast, larger sets of data, as an example. Or you can do completely new thing, uh, a new, have completely new capabilities, build on historical analysis to do predictive uh, maintenance, as an example. That would be a brand new thing to do. So those sort of things would be game changers and we're really looking at harnessing the power of AI ops to get to that place. Mm. Now that leads me to an extended uh, perspective, which is this notion that we've been floating around, which is the autonomous digital enterprise, right? Much like an autonomous vehicle or a self-driven car, an autonomous digital enterprise is a self-reliant enterprise that basically looks for a huge degree of automation hyper automation in this case. Mm. And what this is based on is the notion that as every company today is being disrupted by technology and that's fundamentally changing their business model. So even a financial services company is a technology company. A retail company is a technology company. An auto company is a technology company. So the notion of Every company being a technology company means that every company is going to have software go from being the system of record to the system of action, the system of insights, the system of engagement. All these have been buzzwords by various people, but this is going to become reality in the next few years. The winners are going to be the ones that actually become that much closer and in fact become autonomous digital enterprises. And the key to that is hyper automation. So the natural next question is what is hyper automation, right? So hyper automation is this notion where you basically take a salad bowl, it has three ingredients. One is this digitization, which we've seen the last couple of years. Second is pervasive connectivity. Now with 5G and beyond, it's gonna be even greater connectivity in new forms. The third is what we talked about, which is AI. You take all of these, put them in a salad bowl and mix them up, that's hyper automation. What that basically means is you're going to use automation for physical processes also. Examples of those would be robotic surgery, where robots Mm. do surgery as opposed to actual physical doctors, or even uh, assembly line and car manufacturers, where there are robots that basically do the assembly rather than humans in an assembly line. That is the notion of hyper automation, and that can pretty much become the norm across every industry where there is a physical process in place. It's funny that automation ends up uh, being in the center of what we need to think about this year, given it's been around ever since, you know, I can remember ever since IT has been around, but it's becoming more important as companies are becoming more reliant on technologies. Mm -hmm. As we close, if you think about one word of advice or something that you would like to leave the audience with as far as what's the most important thing that they need to think about as they're getting into 2020, what would that be? Okay, I'll give you two. Um, In this era of uh, AI and a rampant application of technologies in pretty much everything that we do. The most important thing is perhaps knowing what you're solving for. What is the question that you're trying to answer? Because if you don't know what you're doing, you could apply technology randomly and the answer is gonna be 42, from my favorite, one of my favorite books, right? So understand what you're looking for and then apply the right fit technology for it, that's one. The second one is we talked about hyper automation, right? Hyper automation is both a boon and a curse. It's a boon in that it can significantly improve productivity and reduce waste. Mm -hmm. But the context in which it's applied needs to be really important. It does not, it's not gonna create new processes for us. It's only going to improve existing processes. But 
by removing human the human component without really thinking about it you're taking away an important aspect which is the human context that can be applied so experiment think about what you get as an upside but don't look to hyper automate to eliminate human context and applicability in what you're solving for those are the two things that i would uh, leave as cautionary tales yeah, so don't over automate and and again my favorite piece as with you, is if you don't know the question, the answer is always uh, 42. Yep. Uh, thank you so much. Happy holidays, everyone. Cheers. Happy holidays. And thank, thank you for the time. Have a good one.